The following video is for informational purposes only. Proceed with the suggested repairs at your own risk. This video is part of a comprehensive 11 chapter series detailing single venous service. Servicing venous requires special tools. The seasoned BMW techs at Bomb Tools will help you choose the right tools for the models you work with, whether it's a single or double venous on a BMW or any other European car you're repairing. The Bomb Tools guys have it, or know where to get it. German Automotive Special Tools since 1959. That's all we do. Now let's join Angelo Campana for an excerpt from his Single Venos Service Seminar. So now, you got the Venos out. Time to reseal it. Uh, needless to say, so I, I don't go on and on about this, cleanliness is very important when you do this job. I usually disassemble the Venos piston and solenoid, dip the housing, and clean the gasket area. Yep, don't forget to remove the Venos gasket. I bead blast the housing and make sure that all oil ports, including in the housing and piston, are sparkling clean and there's no bead blast or any walnut shells in there. Roger that. By the way, perform this over a table so if you happen to drop any of those pieces, you're not going to be bending, breaking, and chipping aluminum parts. Roger that. So, now you got it apart. The very first thing you're going to check once you have cleaned all of these parts, you're going to check the axial and the radial play of that Venos piston shaft. That is really important, guys. If you have too much and you can move it, time to replace the Venos assembly. There should be very, very little play in that. Now you're going to cut cross-section of the piston seal in the piston groove. Now be careful. You don't want to scratch or damage the land groove in the spool valve. Remove the O-ring. If you do not have to cut out the dried seal, that's good. If you do, do not scar the spooling piston and land grooves because it will damage that o-ring later on down the road. Here's a common sense note. A deteriorated o-ring will be flattened at the top and bottom surfaces. It will be shrunk in size and plasticized more than likely. So probably when you go to pull that o-ring, it's just going to blow apart in a million pieces. Now with these old eyes, I, I always put the spooling piston in the vise with those soft jaws, you remember? the 14001 soft jaws, and then I attempt to remove that seal. Uh, don't have time to slip with that X-Acto razor, then spend an hour or so stitching myself up. Hmm, I think I remember something like that happening before. So after the piston seal has been removed, the piston groove will be metal. Wipe it down, clean it down, make sure it's pristine clean then reinstall the new seal. Now, here's a tip. Chances are that new Venus O-ring is going to be of Teflon material. Drop it in a cup of warm water for a couple minutes. It'll give it a little more elasticity. You can tell if the O-ring is Teflon, as the new Teflon seal is kind of rectangular black construction. Now, when you attempt to stretch this Teflon seal evenly. Take care not to scuff or damage it. Some sliding of the seal on the piston rim is normal, but remember that moderate force is needed to stretch this Teflon seal, so just gentle. Don't be surprised if you have this seal in place and it feels loose. It's all the normal noises in there. This is how you're going to correct that resizing. When you go to install this back into the Venos housing, you, what you're basically going to do, you're going to take the spooling piston and housing surfaces, which are clean already, you're going to apply coats of assembly lubricant or engine oil to the Venos cylinder wall and also to the spooling valve. I like using assembly lubricant because it ensures a good slippery service. You're going to press in on that helical gear shaft to fully separate the piston from the cylinder cover. Insert the piston into the cylinder at about a 30 degree angle, then rotate the piston to insert it into the cylinder. 
Uh, do make sure that you rotate the piston to be flush with the cylinder once that seal has passed the initial edge of the housing. If the seal is binding, pull it back apart, reattempt the seal with a partially resized seal. Eventually, the piston can be fully rotated without binding. Just be patient and take your time doing this. So now that you've got it inserted, you're going to put the mounting bolts in place, the five cover bolts, and you're going to torque them to seven foot pounds. Of course, now you're going to double check that piston movement in the Vano cylinder by inserting and retracting that helical gear shaft. You're going to notice that's going to take a little more guns to move the resealed Vanos as the sealing is tighter, as it should be. It may be advisable after you've reassembled the engine to freewheel the engine to push more oil up in there before you start the engine. Now, all that's really left after you've got at this point is the reassembly of the Vanos and fire that engine up. You're going to find that after you've done this and you did it correctly, you're going to resolve that bogging and surging. You're going to get a smooth, even distribution of power and RPM transitions, a complete resolution of engine hesitations, and a nice, quiet, stable, idle, and smooth, easy takeoffs. Oh, by the way, you're going to get an improvement in the idle when you turn the AC on, and needless to say, you're going to get improved fuel economy. Or that is your customer will. Thanks for watching. This video was brought to you by BTU Service Solutions, a division of Bomb Tools Unlimited, Euro Diagnostic Resources, and Euro Auto Training. We are focused on helping you and your auto repair business thrive. We're eager for your feedback, your comments, and your suggestions. Send us an email, comments at euroautotraining.com.